Welcome to the 360 show. This week we cover all things IPL. Roaring Rajasthan Royals off to a flying start in this year's IPL. RCB in a spot of bother. I also have a nice surprise at the end with something new with a 360 challenge called A versus B. We cover a bit of that as well. Let's go. Let's start with the log then. This year's IPL, we see the Rajasthan Royals right on the top of the pile. The last time they won the IPL was in 2008. It's a long, long time ago, but it's looking good for the men in pink. Uh, I still uh, find it interesting that they're playing in that pink clothing. The blue comes through as well, but um, lovely gear that they have. It always stands out. Um, I have covered a bit of uh, the Spin Twins, Yuzi Chahal and Ravi Ashwin being the, the rock stars in that team, keeping them together, and obviously they're batting been coming to the party. Slow start for Butler and Jaiswell, but now they're finding their feet. And it's a big warning sign for all the teams out there with Rajasthan Royals really playing good cricket. On eight points there the log on the log table, KKR lost that last game against CSK. A very important win for CSK. And they just keep that incredible record at the Chepok Stadium. We'll cover a bit more about that as we go through the teams. And um, as, as we've mentioned before, the lower five um, in a spot of bother there, especially RCB, not looking good. Also not for Delhi Capitals. One out of five, it's not complete disaster, but um, that's not the way you want to start the IPL. And both those teams will have to find a little bit of momentum rather sooner than later. Otherwise, uh, they will be playing dead rubbers at the end of the IPL. And that's not a spot you want to be in. Let's start with Rajasthan Royals and Josh Butler is back to his blistering best, an absolutely incredible performance against RCB. His strike rate was um, obviously as fast as ever, uh, close to 200 strike rate, and um, just playing an incredible knock. It's never e easy to chase a high-scoring game like that, where Virat Kohli scored 100 as well. It would have been pretty intimidating to go out there and to try and find that foundation for your team, but still knowing that you got to score at a, at a rapid rate. Um, but he's done it before, and just an incredible record this guy's got at the IPL. You can see him featuring here on the list of most runs in T20 cricket, still topped by Chris Gale, um, but Joss Butler very quickly um, catching up with 11,281 T20 runs. Uh, that is a lot of runs. Then the, the opening pair, Jaiswal and Butler, right-left-hand combination. Um, I've always found it really difficult as captain to maneuver uh, with the right and lefty at the crease. It's really difficult. The field changes all the time. Then the right-hander is attacking. Then the left-hander comes through. They like different kind of bowlers. It's not as predictable as having two right-handers or two left-handers at the crease, where it's a lot easier than to settle into your game plan. So I think it's a fantastic pair. Both really aggressive players, both match winners, and are both playing really, really good cricket at the moment in really good form. And it boasts well for the top of the loggers. Uh, Rajasthan Royals are still the top unbeaten. Four wins in a row and an incredible start. And uh, looking forward to watch them go from strength to strength. KKR then. The second team will quickly cover here. Uh, the three wins in a row and then losing out to CSK in that final game. Or the, the, the latest game at least. Um, they're at the Chepok Stadium. No one's been able to go out there uh, and dominate CSK on the home ground. Simply incredible. And KKR... Unfortunately for them, falling short there as well. Never getting enough runs in that first innings. Only 137 on what I thought was a decent wicket. And CSK proved that um, with that 141 for three chase um, in 17.4 overs, making it look really easy. Once again, Guy Quad and his troops with MS there, um, Stephen Fleming, just so experienced at their home ground. They know exactly what to do over there. And um, I mean, I've, I've been there many times. I know how intimidating... It can be to play over there. Um, you just feel like you're almost in a different world. Uh, these these yellow jerseys around you, they really suffocate you in the field. And um, when you're bowling, they just seem to play on a different wicket. Uh, they make it look flat. They make it look easy. And um, they certainly know something that no other team knows. Um, but long may that continue for them. Um, it's been incredible for them to, to do so well. But back to KKR, there is a very nice story with Ankrish. Raghavanshi um, getting that 50 in the day on his debut it was a terrific knock. And um, under coach Abhishek Nayar, who's also there at KKR at the moment, 
um, it's just nice because uh, he's familiar with him and um, making his debut in the IPL with Abhishek there, I think, boasts really well for him and really meant the world to him. He looked at home and um, he's a great prospect for the future. He's been quoted saying to obviously don the India jersey, he told the IPL website, but also to wear it like no one has ever done before. Everyone will look at me and say that I'm different. So I'm very excited to see exactly what he means by that. Um, is it the style of cricket that he plays? Is it bringing a bit of fresh energy, being prepared to throw himself around on the field, putting his body on the line for the team? Uh, what I what I do found uh, what, what what I did find with him was I, I felt there was a really strong character, and um, maybe he's the kind of player that's prepared to play any kind of situation for Team India moving forward. Now it's a long way to go. I'm talking Team India, but he certainly has the potential to to one day get there. So KKR, the long and short, decent start. Obviously, that that loss um, against CSK recently, um, I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, sometimes it's good to get a loss out of the way, reset, um, re-strategize, get your troops together again, make sure the game plans are in place, uh, revisit your blueprint as a cricket team, and then you go again. So they've been playing really good cricket. Um, I don't think that loss is the end of the world for them. Then Lucknow Super Giants had a bit of a different start to the IPL, losing that fir very first game against the Rajasthan Royals and then three wins in a row from the What a great bounce back um, from KL Rahul and his troops. Um, I think it's been fantastic. They also have uh, Mayank Yarav, that fast bowler, who's been, who's been really good. He clocked 156.7 kilometers an hour delivery. That's only the fourth fastest IPL delivery of all time. Um, so great prospect for the future there as well for um, Indian cricket, but obviously in this IPL for Lucknow Super Giants, he's got the baddest uh, bouncing around. And uh, I fully agree with Kahiso Rabada's comment here uh, saying, Mayank Yadav has got something that you can't buy, and that is raw pace. That is what he's exploiting, and he's, uh, he is exploiting it extremely well. He has got immense pace, and it seems he can control where he wants to bowl, which is obviously crucial. Pace is one thing, but knowing where the ball goes is almost even more important. We can get both together. I think like a, a Mitchell Johnson in the past, uh, Sean Tate, who's on uh, the list of the fastest ball ever been bowled at the IPL. He seemed to have an idea of where it was going. He was a little bit erratic at times, but generally speaking, he knew where the stumps were, right? And um, that makes it so much more dangerous. And Mayank Yadav has got that. He seems to have control and pace. Now, one thing lacking, experience. We need kids experienced, understanding batters, weaknesses, which of them enjoy short bowl, pitch bowling, which don't, uh, which guys are scared of the ball, um, and, and to get his, his field placings right as well. You've got to be accurate with that. Once he gets experience like that, and he can almost go to the captain and tell him what he wants instead of the captain telling him what he needs to do, that's when, as a bowler, you get into a really good space. So LSG, really good uh, momentum stuff from them there. Three wins in a row, and they move forward very steadily um, in this year's IPL. CSK, the mighty CSK. The, the hometown kings, they know how to, <laughs> to not dominate at the Chepok Stadium. I briefly touched on it um, earlier when I, I spoke about KKR, but these guys um, won three in a row at home. And um, if, I mean, that, that's one of the biggest keys in the IPL. To be successful, you have to make your home ground a fortress. CSK have done that over many years now, and therefore they have the five trophies in the cabinet and they're pushing for number six here. Um, to date, the team has played a total of 64 IPL matches at the Jepak Stadium. Uh, they have won 47 times and lost only 18. That's a 73.44 win percentage at home, which is absolutely astonishing. Um, incredible, incredible effort. The problem for them is they've lost both away games. Now, that is a trend they would like to change. Once again, yes, you need the home ground as a fortress, but you have to upset a couple of teams away from home as well. And um, I'm pretty sure they're not far away from doing that. They have more than enough experience. And the, the blueprint that they play at home, they can definitely apply that at different fields or grounds around India. Um, so, yeah, they just have to sort of make a bit of a mental shift, make sure that they revisit that, that blueprint of what they're trying to achieve when they're traveling. And um, I'm pretty sure they will be fine. And uh, one of the teams that I've no doubt will be there at the back end of the tournament. Moving on to SRH then, uh, the slow rising team. A uh, couple of wins, a couple of losses. Not really sure where they stand, but um, I do think there's enough talent in this team to, to feature there at the back end. Uh, 
fantastic player Abhishek Sharma is a guy I want to talk about. I want to pull up an interesting stat here uh, with his balls per boundary and balls per six as well. 2.74 deliveries it takes him to score a four and 4.93 is for a six in this year's IPL. Yes, only four innings and only 161 runs, uh, but it's simply incredible. And if I'm an opening bowler, knowing that I'll have to bowl in the first six, uh, I will be shivering <laughs> looking at this guy's stats. It's simply incredible. He's a um, magician when it comes to boundary eating. He makes it look really easy. Um, I, I particularly think of that knock uh, with that high scoring match where I just thought like, this guy looks like he's, he's toying with the bowlers. It looks like he's playing with a toothpick and um, just making it look too easy, just not missing the ball, really timing it so well. Uh, that is an incredible stat uh, with regards to balls per boundary, fours and sixes. Um, only second to Andre Russell, and we know what Andre Russell does. I mean, he bats at the back end. And yes, I have to touch on the stat as well. This will probably only uh, be applicable for opening batters and guys who bat really, really deep at, in the innings. Um, all batters who bet from over 6 to 15 will not feature you, trust me. It's just not going to happen. Um, Glenn Maxwell features there because he generally bats the last four or five overs. Um, and that's where that stat comes into play. You just cannot afford to, to risk as much um, as an opening bet um, where there's only two fielders outside of the circle or when you have the license at the back end um, when you have four overs to go and it's all set up for you just to have a full hit. When you bet between over 6 and 15, there's a bit more responsibility. Scoring boundaries at this kind of rate is the last thing on your mind. You want to sort of just build a bit of momentum for the team, set it up. Um, but putting that aside, a simply outstanding record. I mean, he's, he's head and shoulders about the rest um, of the openers um, and just a fantastic batter and a great prospect for the future for SRH and also India cricket. So back to SRH then and their performance this season so far. Yes, yeah, starting with that loss against KKR up front, but I thought they played a good game and then getting that win. And I thought there's going to be a bit of momentum for them where I'll we probably see two or three or four wins in a row. Unfortunately, went back and stumbled again against the Gujarat Titans um, where I, I, I thought they never got enough runs in that first innings at Ahmedabad when we know 160 is generally not enough over there. You need, need a few more. 180 somewhere there is defendable. Um, but then getting that win in that last game. So a bit of an up-and-down season. Um, they have the talent to go all the way. There's no doubt about it. Um, I still think they are sort of searching for that perfect bowling attack um, led by Pat Cummins. Um, one or two things missing there. But all in all, not looking bad. Two out of four wins. You'll take that at the start of the season. And um, there's definitely no doom and gloom there for them. So for SRH, the next game is against the Punjab Kings. I am recording this a day before. So uh, we will update you guys with regards to that. And it's also the next team I'm covering on today's show. It's the Punjab Kings who will be playing SRH in the next game. Uh, also two out of four. So both these teams sit on two out of four. Uh, both need a win and they're playing against each other. Um, very interesting stuff that's happened with the Kings Punjab that I, or Punjab Kings that I really want to cover. Um, is got to do with Shashank Singh, who had that fantastic finish with 61 of 29 balls against the Gujarat Titans. We all remember with the auction, he, him getting picked up and almost uh, the Punjab Kings saying that, uh, you know what, we sort of made a mistake. That's not the guy that we wanted to get. But then there was a lot of confusion. Um, at the end of the day, uh, Pretty Zinta did put out a post, um, really sort of covering it nicely, if we can pull that up. And um, it's a long post, so I, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to go and read it by yourselves. But I thought it was a really nice post saying that, um, it's just a perfect day to finally talk about things that were said in the past about us at the auction. Um, sort of just clarifying everything and Shashank then coming out also saying, it's all cool. Thank you for trusting on me. So it's a really nice story the way it finished. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what happened at that auction. And um, obviously you're going to try and protect the, the franchise once a, a little mistake or a mishap like that goes out. Um, but I thought it was really well handled by Pretty Zinta and also Shashank here. And I think that 61 of 29 balls would have helped sort of settle the dust for everyone. <laughs> uh, pretty obviously claiming now that they maybe didn't make a mistake, um, that was the plan all along. Anyway, long story short, she does say that um, he was on the target list. Whether there was a mistake or a timing issue, um, we won't know. And it doesn't really matter. He is there. He seems to be happy. He's playing good cricket. And um, let's see what happens with that result, as I will be covering that with uh, the live show. Gujarat Titans is the next team. 
Do you remember the Titans? Uh, they've had two outstanding IPLs, uh, obviously lifting the trophy in their very first season. Run us up last year. But two out of five, a little spot of bother, I would say. The big um, bang was losing to Punjab Kings at home uh, two games ago, uh, scoring 199, and then Punjab Kings chasing that down with one ball to spare. That would have been a big blow for uh, Shubman Gill and his team. Um, you want to to win those kind of games, especially at home. You would want to back your guys to get it across the line in front of your home crowd. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a stumble, and then they went on to two losses in a row, obviously traveling to Lucknow, losing to LSG uh, in a game that it looked like, like they lost a little bit of confidence. So two out of five, two bad losses in a row. And, and unfortunately, they missed that trick with the Punjab Kings loss in Ahmedabad. I know the men mental side of that, when you feel you, you had a game in the pocket, it was at home, and now you're going to get on the road and um, you get beaten badly uh, by 33 runs against LSG. There will be some, some really... Intense discussions, I think, with the way forward. Two out of five, there's not a lot of time to reset now. You've got to find the momentum as soon as possible again and fly with it. And so if they're going to feature at the back end, we need to see the Gujarat Titans find that form again. Moving on to the Mumbai Indians, Captain Pandya. Has he made the difference? He's one or two. They're certainly back on track after that last win against the Delhi Capitals, but losing the first three games once again. And just an incredible stat. Uh, I can't put my finger on it and why this happens with the Mumbai Indians. But here's a stat of the matches taken by Mumbai Indians to register their first win in each season of the IPL. Look at that. It's just simply incredible. In 2022, nine games without a win. They've never won the first game at the IPL. And for a team that's won five trophies, it's a, it's a crazy stat. It really is. This year, it took them four games to get their first win. Um, it is a win nonetheless. And I think that would have, would have been very important for Captain Pandya, uh, for experienced players, Rohit Sharma, and the rest of the team. They really desperately needed that win at the Wankedi Stadium. So it is at home. It would have given the crowd hope. And um, if uh, they can get that going, get the Wankedi to be a fortress for them, because they've got a, quite a few home games, games coming up. And um, there's no doubt that this team's got the potential, the ability, the talent to build momentum after that win. Um, so they will be hoping to get a back-to-back -back -back win there and move forward with that momentum. Team RCB then, um, the people from Bengaluru, <clears throat> you see a bit of a smirk on my face because it's not been going very well. And I know in the comments box later, I will be covering a lot of RCB questions. <laughs> you guys want to know what's going on. So starting with a loss in the very first game in Chennai which was, was okay. Then straight bounced back with that win. I thought, here we go. That looked really good. Um, it was in Bengaluru at the Chennaswamy. And then the very disappointing loss against KKR and then also LSG, both at home, which was uh, two big blows in a row. RR um, wasn't too, I wasn't too upset about that. It was in Jaipur. RR was top of the table. You sort of expect them to keep playing that kind of brand of cricket that they have. Uh, but those two wins, KKR and LSG, was very odd, um, especially after a really good win against the Punjab Kings. Um, now, there's a lot of areas, unfortunately, which I think uh, RCB is lacking at the moment. Um, they get, they're getting really good starts with a bat in hand, but we don't really see them exploding from overs four to six. Uh, which is really important. I think in that very last game in Jaipur, maybe uh, Faf and Virat could have been a little bit more attacking in overs five and six. But in saying that, it's also really difficult for them because the middle order hasn't been in the form of their lives. Um, I think of a Maxi and a few others. Um, if you have a really strong glue between batters three, four, five, Patidar as well comes to mind, then you can take the opportunity or the risk of really having a go overs four, five, six when you're in which happened with Faf and Virat against um, RR in that last game, where I thought there was a great golden opportunity to get ahead of the game and really sort of uh, exploit RR and to put them under pressure. And we were looking at 200 plus. I mean, to be 80 without loss after, uh, after the first 10 overs, um, that, in my opinion, is not fast enough on a really good wicket. Uh, when you don't lose wickets, you have to find a way at some stage to pull the trigger and just trust that middle order a bit more. I know it's not easy because they've been out of form. So that's one area. Do we maybe bring in Will Jacks? Um, I think it might be time to pull that trigger on that one. Three losses in a row. You're five games into the IPL. It's maybe time for change. 
uh, that's certainly what I would do. All right, that's it for RCB. I've covered quite a bit now. Um, it's not all doom and gloom, guys. I believe these guys will be back. Um, Faf and Virat up, up the order. The, the form is there. A bit more attacking at the end. And the bowling department to find a bit of rhythm. <clears throat> Get that overseas player in that you think is going to be the game changer. Maybe it is time for Lockie Ferguson to be unleashed. And um, I think Will Jacks might have to find a way to come in. Good luck, selectors. <clears throat> I don't want to be making those big calls. It will not be easy. But hopefully these guys will be back. Delhi Capitals. Um, terrible start as well, um, unfortunately for them. Two losses to start off the tournament. They had that win in the middle where it looked really good for them. Um, and then, unfortunately, um, going back into that slump and losing two again, which is not a good sign. All right. So, once again, a great team. Lots of potential there. Lots of great players. I think of a David Warner who's um, in, in great form but just not getting going in this tournament. Um, there's so many... So many match winners, Richard Punt, um, but they're just not finding their rhythm. They're just not finding a bit of momentum. And unfortunately, the IPL can be brutal when you're not playing good cricket. Um, once again, it's early in the tournament, only five games in, but uh, they can't rest on their laurels anymore. It's time to find um, something that works. Uh, news also, speedster Lazard Williams, South African, has been pulled in place of uh, Harry Brook for the Delhi Capitals. Um, I watched Lazard Williams play over the last few years. He's a, he's a wonderful player, really good competitor. He's a good bowler with a lot of skill. I love his celebration. Um, you'll you'll perhaps see that in the IPL and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but he's a good addition to the team. Hopefully he comes straight in and makes a difference. He had a fantastic SA20 tournament uh, for the Joburg Super Kings, um, playing a really good tournament and being a bit of a match winner for them. And hopefully you'll do the same for Delhi Capitals. So that's a mouthful. That's all the teams, um, some individuals that I wanted to highlight for you guys. I, I hope you've, you've been enjoying the, the IPL so far. And I'm going to move on to the 360 challenge, something different, A versus B. Um, that stands for AB versus Brett. Uh, I spent a bit of time with Brett Lee there in the commentator's box in India. I will be rejoining the team pretty soon. And um, here's a teaser for it. So keep an eye out on socials for this and um, keep following me. There's some really cool content coming your way. I feel a bit like Brett Lee. It's nice. Woo! <laughs> Got him, he's gone! Uh, the competitive juices of Australians and South Africans, it's a problem. What time are we on air tonight? <laughs> Welcome to the 360 Challenge. We've got legendary Brett Lee here. Australian. One, 160 I am. <laughs> 100%. I faced you for the very first time in 2006 at the Wacker, and um, it wasn't pleasant. I'll still have my uh, batting, to say the least. Least. I got a 50, but um, I rem very clearly remember Ball scraping my visor. He towed me up. <laughs> he towed me up. And then Warney came on and just decided, thanks for coming, go sit in the change room. That's right. <laughs> so the 360 challenge today is cricket related. I'm gonna give Brett a batting pose. He's gonna give me a bowling pose, and we're gonna try and keep that for as long as possible. The first guy to falter, is the one that loses. So mm. I'm a bit worried because I did leg work at the gym today. So oh, the legs are a little bit wobbly. But no excuses. <laughs> we don't want excuses here. All right. So the first, my, well, at least my pose is uh, front of square pull shot over there. So it's going to have to pause it there, out. one leg in the air, bend that leg a bit more. And what pose do you want me to hold? Probably when you're up. Oh, the legs are there. Balancing on like. Yeah, you gotta Almost get that. Gotta, gotta get that bent, the back leg bent, and just about just heel off the. <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna have my hand here like yeah, Brett Lee. Yeah, like. A... Okay. Okay. All right, Lynn. <laughs> okay, are we ready? All right. So Brett is a shareholder of the Sydney Beer Co. Beer Company. Yep. And um, I'll also bring some citrus over here to India. So whoever loses has to promote the other one's business. Done. Happy I actually, days. I actually like oranges. <laughs> All right, here we go. And it's three, two, one. Challenge on. <laughs> oh, this is good. Just, just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I can tell you now that technique, the balls are going straight up to finally. <laughs> Mate, well, I actually mid wicket. I couldn't hook a fish. You gotta have your arms straight if you're pulling. There we go. Now you're talking Brian Lara style. Ricky Ponting vibe. Okay, I need to commit a bit more here. There we go. There you go. There we go. I feel a bit like Red Lee. 
It's nice. I haven't played a hook shot one, but never played a hook shot with a suit on. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a fast bowler. This is nice. Standing next to Brett Lee doing his action. <laughs> I'm getting the cramp in my right call. <laughs> Tell you what, my, my Achilles tendon is starting to bark. How much do you have left in you, you think? Not huh? much. <laughs> my inside quad is starting to hurt. The one's swimming under the, the ground. <laughs> I'm about to release here. I think I'm gone here. <laughs> lock, lock me in for a calf tomorrow. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Got him, he's gone! Back in. <laughs> Just overcompensate. Goodness. Okay, hold your, hold your pose. <laughs> what time are we on air tonight? <laughs> uh, the competitive juices of Australians and South Africans, it's a problem. <laughs> Ouchie. Who was the best war player? Oh, got him! <laughs> <laughs> I got excited! <laughs> oh, he's gone, he's gone! Yes! Come on! Oh, well played. Oh, there's the celebration as well. Oh. oh my goodness. Alright, so the Sydney Beer Co. Just go buy the beer. It's an unbelievable beer. I haven't tasted it, but he's, he promises to bring me a case. Later on in the IPL, why am I out of breath? But it's all about the Sydney Beer Co. who winning this challenge. What well up, mate? Well done, Bing. <laughs> that hurt me. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm honestly sore. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a 360 challenge. Um, pretty cool stuff. I have a lot more coming your way. I will also be uh, filming more content um, in the near future. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. I love having a bit of fun. Um, I love tongue in the cheek stuff and just sharing moments with uh, with people. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. So keep an eye out on my socials for that. I will be updating you guys. So let's move on to the comments box then. Um, I did briefly touch on it. There is a lot of questions about Team RCB. I did spend most of my time analyzing Team RCB as well. Um, they're all my friends, so it's always really difficult to to be one hundred percent honest with what I think. Um, I never want to hurt anyone's feelings. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a terrible start. It is what it is. Um, it's not too late to come back. And hopefully they do. Uh, they, they do have the players to do so. And I, I really hope they, they find that. All right. So which is the best spinner for RCB is the first question. Um, I mean, Karen Sharma is a fantastic leg spinner. Um, I just think we, at the moment, I mean, Maxi has done a good job as well. Um, Lomro is a, is a good spinner as well. It's, it's really difficult because I feel we're lacking an X-Factor spinner. And Karan Sharma can maybe um, fall into that category. But, uh, I mean, there's just a difference between uh, someone like a, a Rashid Khan, for instance, who can come out and, and break the game completely open. Where I think Karan is a bit more flatter through the air. Um, he is a fantastic player, though. It's really difficult to bowl at the Chinnaswamy. Um, you're always under pressure there. And that's where I feel like a guy that's really difficult to pick is what's missing in that spin department department at the moment. Um, they pulled in Asaranga, kept him there, let Yuzi Chahal go. Was that the right move? Uh, I'm not so sure. But anyway, the long and the short is I do feel it's one of the weaker areas in the RCB team is the spin department, uh, followed by the bowling department, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, and that that they play together, right? Uh, the spinners um, form a team with the seam bowlers and they got to work together and sort of feed off each other. And that's just not happening in the team at the moment. All right, next one, 316. Is the mentality the difference or the impact player advantage, which is leading to very high scores in the IPL? I loved watching you play. Thank you very much for that. Um, I, I think it's a combination of both. I think the game has evolved um, from the back in the days with the Chris Gales and um a few guys playing with him in that RCB team, really setting the standard of breaking th doors down with regards to high scores. Um, I think already then the seed was planted of what's possible. So the game sort of just kept evolving. Players started taking it on a bit earlier, understanding that overs four to six is a great area to, um, to put pressure on the bowlers, especially when you haven't lost a wicket at that stage. And then also being more attacking in the middle overs than ever before. Overs nine to 15 generally was, was like a, uh, a runner ball kind of phase for everyone. We now I feel players are 
sort of really targeting certain bowlers that they feel comfortable with, even if it's overs 9, 10 or 11. So, so it's a combination of both. It's that and also the impact player. Obviously, um, when you're batting second, you haven't used that impact player in the first innings. It's always going to be a great addition to the batting lineup just to throw in a specialist batter there. All of a sudden, you have eight frontline batters and it just looks great. So it's a bit of both. It's a good question. Thank you very much for that. Dear AB, after Virat, the next Indian player on the highest run getters list for RCB is Rahul Dravid. Can you believe it, people? Who last played for them in 2010. Why hasn't RCB been able to create a solid Indian core of players like other teams over the years? It's, it's a very, very valid point that you make. Um, for some reason, with RCB, very few youngsters have bursted through the scenes um, in that environment for some reason. Um, I'm going to have to tell you, I, I, I don't know what the answer is. Perhaps they feel intimidated by some of the senior players. Um, is it to do with this, this, the, the coaching staff or just the, the, the team morale and the culture? I, I can't tell you because I see it happening in other teams. I see unknown names being unleashed in franchises and becoming household names a year or two later. It hasn't happened a lot for RCB for some reason. And I, I unfortunately don't have an answer, but you make a very valid point. If they, if they, if they want to um, change the fortune for this franchise, they have to find a strong core of local players. Um, I spoke to Anil Kumble about this, and he believes that there's not enough local boys that's been brought through the system RCB in the past has looked too much um, away from home, looking to get other youngsters involved or into the franchise where they seem to not have faith or trust in the local talent. And um, I feel that's a problem. You need to have a really strong core of Bengaluru players um, representing that franchise to, to get that identity. And I feel that's maybe where you'll start seeing household names feature again from the local players. So it's definitely an area that they need to address, I feel, in, a, in the future. Look at getting more people from Bangalore, from Bengaluru, um, young players, 18, 19 years old, and hold them there. Keep them there. Don't let go of them. Give them the experience they deserve. Let them hang around the senior players. Learn from them. And when the time is right at the age 21, 22, 3, 4, doesn't matter what the number is, then they will be ready to go and win games of cricket for you. And guess what? They would be... Bengaluru players, you know, from the city. I think that's vitally important for the identity of that franchise. Um, any suggestion for Rajat Patidar? Um, look, cricket is a funny old game. It's all to, got to do with confidence, uh, with form, with the mental side of it. He will be back. He's a high-quality player. Slow start to the IPL, but um, I've no doubt that this guy is going to score a lot of runs in the future for Team RCB. All right, what do you think of people criticizing Virat for his low strike rate? I, I don't think his strike rate is too low. Scoring 100 of 70 balls, um, I, I would say, I mean, he can be highly, highly critical of himself maybe. Maybe he can tell himself, I could have batted five balls faster, whatever the case may be. But um, there's also other side of the coin of the batters that batted with him, that had a really good foundation with him. Um, it's also their responsibility to maybe take the game on more and say, listen, if Virat is there at the end, we're going to win this game. Let me take a bit more of an aggressive angle. So it's more ways uh, than one to look at something. I think Virat's playing a wonderful cricket. I think it's uh, boasting well for India, hopefully um, with that World Cup. Um, seeing Virat there would be fantastic. And um, with this kind of form, I, I can't see why. And then last but not least, do you think RCB can qualify for the playoffs this time after losing three games out of four? Uh, well, four out of five now. Is there any possibility? It's been a tough season for RCB. Lost few home team matches for RCB. Yeah, so it's, it's a good question. I touched on it earlier that two back-to-back -back losses against KKR and LSG at home at the Chinnaswamy would have been a very big blow. Um, they, they needed some momentum there and unfortunately lost track of things. Now it's time to reset. Reset. Um, revisit your blueprint, maybe make a change or two, and then stick to it with the rest of the tournament. Um, whatever you change now, after this next game or two, there's no more time for changes. You've got to pick your 11 or your 12, and now it's time to trust in them, trust that middle order, trust your bowling department, trust Virat and Faf up the order to go and be the difference. All right, that's enough of RCB. Thanks for the comments, and thank you very much for taking part in um, that comment section and giving me some questions. It was all <laughs> to do with RCB. There are no surprises there. 
because it's been a terrible start this season. Um, also, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification, like this uh, specific episode as well. If you don't mind, I will really appreciate it. Just a feel-good story to finish off then. There's a man from the UK, Russell Cook, Russ Cook from Worthing Reaches, Russ Angela, Tunisia, after covering more than 9,900 miles. Simply incredible. He's, he was running the full length of Africa in 352 days. And um, he's got every right to be exhausted. He's nicknamed the hardest geezer. Uh, he's the Englishman that crossed the finish line in Tunisia, running through 16 countries. The task of covering the distance, equating to more than 385 marathons. Um, simply incredible, right? You face an armed robbery, visa issues, food poisoning, and the works. Go have a look at this guy on, um, on Instagram. This is the BBC News Instagram handle. Um, it's a fantastic story, and I think a very fitting way to finish this week's episode. So thank you very much um, for joining me uh, on the 360 show. Um, the IPL goes ahead. RR at the right at the top. RCB in a spot of bother as I started this episode with. Hopefully RCB can turn things around. Don't lose faith, people of Bengaluru. I believe they will be back. i see you guys live this Saturday. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you guys on the weekend.